Introducing our esteemed guest, Jonathan Kahn, who will be discussing his latest book as well as a revelation, The Dragon's Prophecy. This groundbreaking work dives into the unseen forces shaping today's world events. Khan uncovers mysteries such as the return of the Sea Peoples, the Dark Resurrection, the Black Sabbath, the Prince of Persia, and the Countdown of Days. He reveals how these elements, they converge into the end time prophecy. In the Dragon Prophecy, you will discover the ancient mystery that predicted the Hamas attack on Israel down to the exact day the hidden force influencing global events, a 3,000-year principle that forecasts future events, the secret behind a key issue in our modern times, the ancient prophecy revealing next major world event and an ongoing deadly war that many of you are not aware is taking place. So right now, let's welcome Jonathan Kahn as he shared these revelations and more, offering new perspective on our world's future. Jonathan, hello. And glad to have you here with me as well. Hey, oh, always great to be back with you, Glad. Glad, always great. How is the Dragon's Prophecy different from any other book you have written? Yeah, the, the Dragon's Prophecy is the first book I've ever written that opens up a fully, it goes into the dimension of end time prophecy, Israel world events from Revelation, Ezekiel, but, think, but in a whole different realm, what, what's actually happening now that links to all those things. And so, you know, people have always, you know, said, when are you gonna do that? Well, God just interrupted me, Vlad. I was gonna, mm -hmm. I was actually working on the return of the gods, the sequel, and I'm gonna do that, but the Lord just interrupted me. And I saw, I literally saw this dragon in my mind's eye. And, and the thing is that I was from Revelation and I've never written a book where as I'm writing it, the things are coming true in the world while I'm writing it. And I had to keep on rewriting it because uh -huh. of that. And the other thing is I've never written a book that that has had so much warfare, you know, to stop the book, which you could imagine. I mean, that's what we'd expect, but it's happening. So I know all the more that it's God's time, you know, that this is for now and for God's people. Um, and also we've never had such a groundswell, you know, I mean, we've always been blessed and with, with people wanting the books and all that beforehand. But this has been like with the Dragon's Prophecy, it's like twice as much as we've ever experienced. So I believe it's a real hunger because it's now we're watching events unfold. I mean, wow. literally end time prophecy. I mean, so you pretty much had this vision to write this book and I'm assuming this is when around this time where the October 7th happens. Is it true that one of the mysteries that you reveal in the book, um, it's pretty much a foretold an invasion of Israel by Hamas and what would happen and even when it would take place? Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I I was actually I was speaking at the congregation. I, we, we we both have congregations. And I, I have a congregation in New Jersey, Beth Israel, um, and I'm speaking on the a mystery that ordained that there would be an attack on Israel. It would in the year 2023. It would happen in October of 2023. It would it would catch Israel by surprise. Uh, it would be a calamity. It would happen on a Sabbath day. It would take place on a Hebrew holiday. Um, it would happen on the first Saturday of October of 2023. That is what the mystery ordained. I shared that the next morning it happened. And, wow. and those who were at the service said, you were just talking about this. And this mystery, Vlad, and this is, you know, this is in the book, um, that may even enable us to tell, to know future events and even when they happen according to God's plan. And Actually, since the book came, since I finished the book, um, three other things from that mystery have come to pass. So, listen, God's on the throne. God, there's nothing that catches him by surprise. And he does reveal to us, you know, his ways and his plans before he does them. That's good. Well, you're not going to spoil that for us on how you came about those dates. So, everybody's going to have to get the book. <laughs> but those people that struggle, and I've noticed that even in your books, um, The Return of the Gods, there's really a spiritual warfare mentality, a spiritual warfare backdrop, almost like you're pulling the curtains to show that something is happening behind the scenes that people are not realizing is um, those people that are struggle with the idea of the devil and, you know, everything is the devil. How does the Jewish history testify of the devil's existence? Yeah, the, you know, there, there, there are people who, okay, I can believe in God, but what the devil thing is, or they're just, they, they struggle with that. Well, the thing is this, you know, first of all, there is evil in the world, clearly, mm -hmm. and there is evil that you cannot explain rationally. I mean, you cannot explain Hitler and the Third Reich or the Holocaust rationally. It's not yeah. rational. It's demonic. 
And what happened on October 7th also was not political or cultural. It was demonic what happened. And the thing is that the Bible, so the Bible opens up, tells us from the beginning, there is an entity that is an angelic entity that is twisted, that, that, that inverted against God. And so this, the, in Hebrew, he's called hasatan, and we get the word Satan from it, mm-hmm. means the opponent, the, the one who goes against all things. He, his mission is to destroy the, the, the purposes of God, the works of God. Uh, to invert them, twist them. He's twisted himself and to twist them. So you have that on one side. And then on the other side, God brings a people into the world to accomplish his purposes, to bring the word to the world, to bring the the ways of God, the knowledge of God to the world, to bring God into the world, Mm -hmm. Messiah. And that is, of course, the nation of Israel. The Jewish people Mm -hmm. were born for that purpose, to the purpose of God. They're ultimately born to bring the kingdom of God into the world. You know, so therefore, what happens? I mean, let's say we we didn't know this. Let's say we're from another planet. We all we knew was those two things. You know, well, we could tell right then. We could write out the history of the world, Jewish history. What it means is that the Jewish people. There's going to be a war. It's an ancient war. It's going to be the war of the the enemy against the Jewish people, and it it's going to go on for ages. There's nothing. It's never going to die. You know, until Messiah comes. And it is, they are going to become the most persecuted people on earth, the most warred against, mm-hmm. attacked, Satanized, demonized people in the world. Mm-hmm. And that makes sense. That's exactly what, you know, the, the communists hated the Jews. They, they, they said the Jews that were capitalists. The capitalists said the Jews were communists. You know, the, the, the Nazis hated the Jews because they wouldn't stay, they, they touched the, their culture. Others said, well, no, they keep to themselves. There's never a consistent reason. Wow. And it doesn't matter. In ancient times, medieval times, modern times, and people who have nothing to do with each other, whether they're Nazis or radical Islamic, you know, Muslim uh, revolution, it doesn't matter. It, it, it never makes sense, but wow. it does make sense when, as you said, you pull the veil away, the Bible says it. So this explains all of it. And what we just witnessed was just the last the last event of an ancient war that we are all part of. Yeah, I mean, even, even seeing what happened after October 7th in the United States, what happened, I was in, um, okay. in Europe, what happened there of students, I mean, people that are smart, people that are wise and on the streets, Propagating for, I mean, homosexuals fighting for uh, for the rights of the of the, of, of, of Gaza and, and saying you know the, the the gay people are are for Gaza and seeing all of that and the anti-Semitism, I would have never thought a year ago that we would see the rise of that in my own time. I mean, everybody remembered Hitler, everybody remembered Holocaust. Yeah. I thought this this will never come back, but because yeah. this is spiritual, this is not political, and this is demonic because Satan is against the nation of Israel, and because of what is still yet to come. Now, you dive in into the book of Revelation that contains the vision of a dragon and the woman. What do those visions yeah. reveal? Yeah, the Bible, in Revelation 12, it says, I saw a woman clothed with the sun and the moon, and she is uh, she has a, a crown of 12 stars, and she gives birth to the Messiah. Well, there's only one, and that is that is all the imagery of Israel. It goes back to Genesis, mm-hmm. the 12 stars. Only one has given birth to Messiah. You know, the church didn't give birth to Messiah. The church is born of Messiah. Good. So the thing is that, but Israel, that's clearly Israel. And so you have that on one side, and this is, then I saw a dragon, a red dragon. That's when, when Vlad, I was in my car actually taking my my sons to school, and, and that's when the Lord interrupted, and I literally saw this dragon. And the thing is that that dragon is the enemy. It's a symbol of the enemy in the Bible. The dragon makes wages war against the woman. That's mm-hmm. all there in Revelation. And by the way, this is 2,000 years ago before Hitler, before, before October 7th. It's all there. It says that he hunted her or the Greek word persecuted her. Well, that's, that's exactly what we've witnessed. But also it says that he was filled with, in Greek, the word is orgizo, a rage, a, a, a rage of hatred against this, this, the, the woman. Mm-hmm. And that explains what, you know, what, what took over Hitler. That's this dragon. It's the orgizo. What took over Hamas? It's the dragon. It's the, it's the, the orgizo. And the thing is that, that when you look at that revelation in, of that vision, It centers on two times, the beginning of the age and the end of the age. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the age, the woman gives birth to the Messiah. That's the beginning of the vision. But at the end, it's the end of the age when he's persecuting her. And so, of course, he's persecuted the Jewish people for 2,000 years. But it's saying it's focused on the days when there's an Israel in the world. And that was only the first century of this age. And now, so when Israel comes back, 
It, it's gonna it, it's gonna intensify. This war is gonna kick in, and the world is not just gonna be hating the Jewish people; they're gonna be hating Israel. And that's exactly what you just said. You saw everybody was shocked that it was still here. It never dies. You know, the dragon is a light sleeper. He it's always there, wow. and so that is all part of it. So all these things are gonna kick in when Israel comes back where we are right now. Wow. And the dragon's prophecy reveals an ancient mystery that lies behind one of the central issues of modern times. Now, what is the secret of the sea peoples? Yeah, you know, th this is now, <laughs> this is an issue that is so much in everything. It's used more than anything else against Israel. And yet what, what, what we're going to see is there's a revelation. When you, when you look at it, what the Bible says, it's so like, all of a sudden it becomes crystal clear. The enemy is an imitator. Mm -hmm. he, he mimics God. He, he pretends to be God. Mm -hmm. He wants to be God. And so he mimics. So what did God do? God resurrected his ancient nation of Israel after 2,000 years, resurrected them, Ezekiel, the Valley of Dry Bones. Mm -hmm. So what is the enemy going to do? The enemy is going to have his own. He's going to imitate that. He's going to have his own resurrection. He's going to raise up an ancient people and what people? Well, he's the enemy. So he's going to raise up an enemy people of Israel, a people that were the arch enemy in the Bible of Israel. Who were they? They're called the Pilashte, or we call them the Philistines. And they were the arch enemy. So what would happen if the, if the enemy raised up? And by the way, it's not about the people. We pray for all the people. They don't know their pawns. Mm -hmm. they, they're being used. But this is what's happening. So the amazing thing is just as Israel starts coming back to, into the world, this other res resurrection begins. And, and the word we call them, you know, they're in the world, they call them the Palestinian people. Uh -huh. Do you know what the word, pa I know you know that, but the word Palestinian mean, literally means the Philistines. It literally means the Philistines. In fact, when you say the word Palestinian, they don't say the word Palestinian, they say, they speak Arabic. Mm -hmm. The Arabic word for a Palestinian literally is Philistine. They call they are the Philistine people. And so the amazing thing, it's just as at the very moment that the Jewish people began gathering back to Israel, this resurrection started coming on the Arab peoples of Israel. They started basically turning in, they didn't start out this way. This identity came upon them as they call themselves the Philistines. And they actually start, it's a transformation. They actually started taking up the qualities of the Philistines. The Philistines were warlike people. Mm -hmm. They trained their boys to become soldiers to kill Israelites from their, from their, their childhood. It's exactly what, I mean, everything is replaying just as it was 2000 years ago. How does this prophecy is really a mystery behind of what happened on October 7th? Yeah, well, the, the, the thing is that, you know, if you look in the Bible, the, the place where the Philistines were, mm -hmm. it was called Philistia. It was the strip of land. T today, it has a different name. The name today for ancient Philistia is called the Gaza Strip. Oh, and the know. thing is, and there was, you know, the city of Gaza was a Philistine city. You know, and, but the Gaza Strip did not exist. You know when it came back, lad? It came back into the world in 1948 when Israel was born, the Gaza Strip was born. Oh, so wow. the Jewish people were brought back to their ancient land. The, the people called Philistine are brought back to their ancient land. The, so, so what happened in the Bible is that the Philistines would launch raids, attacks on Israel from the Gaza Strip, and they would attack Israeli villages. And exactly what happened, October 7th was the replay of the mystery from the Bible. And the thing is, the Bible even gives the exact spot where they attack. There's, it gives two names. One is called the Shephelah, or the Lowlands, and the other is called the Negev, or the South. And where the Shephelah and the Negev overlap, it's a little strip of land. Right on that strip of land is where they had that music festival. Right on that strip is where those kibbutzes were. Wow. Right there is where the attack happened. So it's all replaying. And what they did that day is exactly what the Philistines did in the Bible. It's a replay. And the dragon is using them to attack Israel. Oh, my goodness. It's kind of like now picking up the Bible, reading Samuel and Kings is like in a total different light. This is, this is happening again, right in yeah. front of our eyes, that resurrection. Now, you're right that that Hamas appears in the Bible. Tell us how. Yeah, Hamas is actually one of these strange words that it's an Arabic word, 
but it's also a Hebrew word at the same time. In Arabic, it means it's the Islamic resistance movement, and the Arabic word means zeal or fervor. But in Hebrew, Hamas means evil, death, and destruction. Mm -hmm. And the word is actually in the Bible. It actually appears. And when you look at where Hamas is in the Bible, if you look at the original Hebrew, it's amazing. For instance, it says, it says in the Bible, it says, Lord, save me from the man of Hamas. Another one says in Ezekiel, Hamas has risen up as a rod of evil in the land. Oh, wow. Another one says the land is full with bloodshed. Hamas is in the city. Another one, you know how Hamas actually hides in the dark. They have yeah. the tunnels and they do all that. Well, the, well, it says in the Bible, Hamas dwells in the dark places of the earth. And, and one of the promises of the kingdom of Messiah, when Jesus reigns in Israel, it says, and no longer shall Hamas be heard in oh, your land. Oh, wow. So, I mean, it's amazing. Let me, let me just throw in one thing, because Vlad, you know, you know I, I was growing up, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't raised as a believer, I'm, but I'm raised, I was raised Jewish and I'm, I'm in the Hebrew school, I'm learning the story of Samson. And uh -huh. you, I'm sure, learned the story of Samson, you know, when you were growing up. And we all did. Well, the thing, you may think about that for a second. Samson was an Israelite. He is taken as a captive, a hostage uh -huh. from Israel into the Gaza Strip, literally into the city of Gaza, where all the hot, he's the first hostage of Gaza. But then, you know, he, he has his, you know, God used him. He strikes down the temple. And mm -hmm. it says about 3,000 Philistines were struck down that day. Mm -hmm. Well, what if there was going to be a revenge? And not that the, the, the Palestinians know it, but the, the dragon has a long memory. And so what if they were going to be used? Well, now on October 7th, you have a revenge. You have, you have the people from Gaza, the city of Gaza. Uh -huh. They invade Israel, take captives back. And, the, and, and how many were they? The, the Israeli defense said there, there were about 3,000 of them from Gaza. In the book of Judges, it says that the, the, those who were struck down by Samson in, in Gaza, they were about 3,000 Gazans. It's the return of the 3,000. Wow. You write in, uh, in your book as well that the Adolf Hitler had a part in October 7th. I mean, we know that Hitler is dead. How, is, yes. how did he appear in October 7th? It's amazing because, you know, and, and this makes sense again, when you look at Revelation and you look at this ancient war, it doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. The people come and go. You know, the, yeah. the, you know, the enemy uses people and then they, they die. And then another, pe another person mm -hmm. comes, another organ, and they take up the torch where the other, it's like the one hands the torch to the next, you yeah. know, and that's exactly what happened. People don't realize this. Hitler actually funded, in the 1930s, he supported, they funded, they trained an organization called the Muslim Brotherhood. Oh, wow. And they trained them, they, and the Muslim Brotherhood translated Hitler's books into the Arab world, Mein Kampf, into the Arab world. And so the thing is that, so, so here he's financing this, this they're all doing it. Then Hamas, then, and actually the Muslim Brotherhood gives birth to another organization. That organization is called Hamas. You have a line from Hitler, Muslim Brotherhood, to Hamas. And actually, when you look at the original charter of Hamas, the founding charter, it's, it's the words of Hitler. It's right in there. And in fact, when they, the Israelis went into the West Bank, they found in, in, the, in Hamas's places, they found Mein Kampf, Hitler, Hitler's autobiography. Not only that, I mean, not only that, Vlad, but, but Hitler also had someone he employed from the, from the Muslim world, a man called the Mufti of Jerusalem. He actually worked for Hitler, broadcast on Radio Berlin against the Jews to the Arab world, uh, a terrible man. But anyway, he actually is called the father of Palestinian nationalism, but he was an agent of Adolf Hitler. And he took a disciple, and his disciple was an Egyptian teenager whose name was Yasser Arafat who oh. then becomes this. And so, I mean, it's amazing, but it's all there. And I'll, I'll throw in one other thing. And that is, you know, you know, there, there's Hitler, but then there's also the man called Heinrich Himmler. And Himmler was the one who oversaw the Holocaust. And the thing is, Himmler was given that position to really have charge over all those populations on the date, October 7th, for the Holocaust, October 7th. Oh, wow. And Himmler was actually born on October 7th, and so on October 7th, you have another kind of Holocaust. That's why it resembled it. You know, it's not that the people are planning it out, uh -huh. but, the, but the dragon, the enemy knows. 
Wow, the spirit, there's such a spiritual connection to all of that yeah. behind the scenes that you just can't make none of that up. So you've talked about Hamas and you've talked about Gaza and the Philistines from the history. And yes. now how is Hamas and all of that is connected in the book of Revelation? Because in the book of Revelation, we don't see Philistines anymore, but, but you're making a connection between Hamas and also what's happening in the book of Revelation. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, because, I mean, because it, we're dealing with spiritual things, as you said, we're dealing with the enemy. So there's connections that people don't even realize. In the book of Revelation, how does the dragon attack the woman? He attacks her. He says he spews a flood out of his mouth mm -hmm. and tries to flood her away, overwhelm her. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the enemy has tried to do that to the Jewish people many times. But October 7th was certainly a flood that came on the land. But not only that. The Hamas actually has, they, they have a name for what they did. They, they have, a, they, it's an operation, they called it. The name that Hamas gave to their operation where they, they uh, massacred Israelis, it's called Operation, I'm, I'm condensing it, it's Operation Tufan. Tufan is an Arabic word. What does it mean? What do they call it? It means the flood, oh, the wow. flood, <laughs> the dragon's flood. And they're using the same word from the book of Revelation. That's crazy. How's um, October 7 connected to the principle of satanic desecration? Yeah, the enemy is a desecrator. He, uh -huh. he takes what is holy and defiles it, turns it around, inverts it to become unholy. So it's no accident that when did he attack? He attacked October 7th, wasn't just October 7th. It was the Sabbath day, the holy day of Israel, where they want, where they're there to get peace. Instead of peace, they have they get conflict. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that 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 also, you know, on the Sabbath, the Jewish people traditionally they welcome God into their homes. They welcome the Sabbath. They welcome the angels. They mm -hmm. welcome. Well, on that day, they had other visitors, and they were demonic visitors coming to their houses. And so they're trying to stop. It's like the reverse. And you know, uh, the enemy when he he has these these unholy days, they call them Black Sabbaths, you know, the witches' Black Sabbath. Well, you know what Israel calls that day, that Sabbath day in Hebrew? It translates to the Black Sabbath. Wow. So you've got the Sabbath, he desecrates it, but then on the same day, it's a holy day. It's a Hebrew holy day that's called Simchat Torah, which means the joy of God's word. And it's the one day where the Jewish people are told to rejoice and rejoice and go out of your house and, and sing and dance and clap your hands and rejoice over God's word, over God's revelation. Well, the enemy takes that, the day of joy, and he defiles it, becomes a day of sorrow and mourning. But in the camps of the enemy, the enemy has his own his own holiday because in Gaza, in the West Bank, and the enemies of Israel in the Arab world, guess what? On that day, that's Hebrew, that's Israel's day of joy, they rejoiced, they did exactly what the Jewish people were supposed to do. They went out of their houses, went onto the streets, sang and danced and clapped because Jewish people were killed. And actually on the day of Simchat Torah, it is, the, it is ordained that they give out candy on that day. Mm -hmm. Well, throughout, throughout the West Bank and the Arab world, they actually gave candy out throughout the, the enemies of Israel to celebrate Jewish blood. It was the devil's holiday. Oh my goodness. What exactly did the mystery foretell of the invasion of Israel? Yeah, this is this is linked to the Jubilee. And the Jubilee, uh -huh. of course, is God's year of restoration. And and um, you know, if you lost your land, you got it back. Um, and if you were a slave, you got set free. Well, Israel lost its land for two thousand years. So the amazing the first amazing thing is that God restored Israel according to the mystery of the Jubilee. Uh -huh. And every 50 years, every something happened, the restoration of Israel happened on this 50-year mystery. Uh, just a quick example, 1867, the land of Israel is released so the Jewish people can actually start purchasing it. That was 1867. Go 50 years later, the Jubilee is 1917. Anything happen? 1917, the British Empire issues the Balfour Declaration and the Jew to give a, the Jewish people the homeland in Israel. That's the year that they gained it from the Turks and the Turks fled and they give it to the Jewish people, but they never got Jerusalem. If you go 50 years later, it takes you to 1967. Anything happened in that Jubilee six day war? Israel is restored to Jerusalem in that Jubilee so Jesus can come to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But the only thing they didn't, the thing what they didn't get, what you get in the Jubilee is you get the legal right to your land. Uh -huh. And they, they, no nation, every nation on earth refused to recognize Jerusalem. To every, there was not one. 
And that, but that broke in the year 2017, which is the next Jubilee, when America issued the Jerusalem Proclamation for the first time ever since ancient times, recognizing Jerusalem as right. So all that happened according to the Jubilee. Uh -huh. So the devil is going to imitate God and he's going to turn the Jubilee against the Jewish people. So he's going to take an event that was a calamity, mm -hmm. not a good one. And that was called the Yom Kippur War. And the Yom Kippur War attacked Israel. It was the worst calamity it ever had because it almost destroyed Israel in 1973. In fact, the prime minister of Israel almost committed suicide. They thought it was the end of Israel. By a miracle, they turned it around. But it shook Israel to this day. Well, what happens if you go to the Jubilee of that, of the years. Yom Kippur War? It takes you to the year 2023. 23. And where, when, did the, when did the Yom Kippur War happen? In October. It takes you to October 2023. That is the Jubilee. Mm. And it when did it happen? It happened on a Saturday. So it takes you to a Saturday, the Saturday of October 23. When on the first Saturday, that's when it happened. It, so it's exact to the exact time, the exact thing, another calamity. This was the devil's Jubilee. And I won't go into it, you know, because there's, there's so much in it. I do it in the book, as you know. But there's actually these prophetic countdowns that one, one is like 19,000 days and it ends up on the exact day, it pinpoints the exact day of October 7th. So what I'm saying is that, you know, this mystery may even enable us to know exact events to come and when exactly they will come. Three of them have already happened since I finished the book. Wow, that is crazy. Your book opens up about the signs of the end times. What are those signs? Yeah, you know, the, a lot of people don't realize the end times, that, the first things about the end times actually begins with Moses. As far back as the first books of the Bible, he speaks of something called the Aharit Yamim, which means the, the latter days or the last of days or the end of days. And what does he say is going to happen? Let, let's say we didn't know what was happening now. We just knew that. Mm -hmm. we're, we're from the past. It says it's going to happen. Though, you're going to know the end times, number one. When Israel, after have been wandering the earth, the Jewish people, they're going to be, God, God's going to take them back to Israel. That's the beginning. Well, we're there. It says, then all the nations are going to be focused on this little New Jersey-sized land of Israel. We're there. It says that the nations will be conflict over Israel. There'll be, there'll be hatred and conflict and attacks on Israel. Well, we're there. And it says that all, it's ultimately going to lead to all nations coming against Israel. Well, we're moving there. And it also says it'll be a time of great adversity or the devil. The devil's name is the adversary. Uh -huh. He's going he's to go crazy in those days. Well, we're watching it. And it's going to be a time of great apostasy, of falling away from the faith. We're all there. These are the end of days. Wow. We are there. And this is why every person that's watching this, um, listening to this, you need to be right with the Lord because he is coming. And we are standing at the edge. We are standing. So we are standing right at the doors of Messiah coming back to restore His kingdom, defeat His the enemies, and and His feet will land like the Bible says on Mount Olives, um, right there in Jerusalem. And one of the chapters you have in your book is called the Collar of the Apocalypse. What is that yeah. all about? Yeah, the the in, in the book of Revelation it actually gives colors, you know. And, and the colors, it speaks of the, the, the riders and horses, horsemen of the apocalypse. And so, so we have the white horse. And then we have the, we have the red horse, symbolizing war, the white horse conquest. Then we have the, the, the black horse, you know, want and, and, pet and, um, and, and famine. And then we have the pale green, the green horse, which is that of, of death. So we got, here are the four colors. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing is that when, when we, you watch and I watch and we all kind of watch in horror, mm -hmm. not only what happened in Israel, but what happened in America and what happened around the world. It was with all this hatred of Israel. It mm -hmm. was all done in the name of a flag. And that's the flag of Palestine. And by the way, Palestine means the land of the Philistines. So you're, mm -hmm. you're calling the promised land the land of the Philistines. And so the flag, what are the colors? White as the white horse, red for the red horse, black for the black horse and green for the green horse oh. all the colors of the apocalypse and the other thing is glad every nation in the world the nations that have that configuration are all enemies who want israel destroyed uh well that wow the prophet ezekiel foretolds a coming invasion of israel 
that may be the next big prophetic event. In your book, you reveal the surprising connection to that prophecy. What is it? Yeah, the, the, in the Dragon's Prophecy, I mean, again, this is where the largest section is on the end of days. And, and the thing is that the, ne- the, the, the event that is most likely the next great, a gigantic event is what Ezekiel prophesied in Ezekiel 38 and 39, where he prophesies the coming of a mass invasion of Israel. This is not Armageddon. This is mass invasion of, of nations. And it names the nations, so we can identify the nations. Uh-huh. So the first thing about them is, is that every one of those nations is an enemy of Israel in some way, every one of them. Mm-hmm. Today, today, how did Ezekiel know? Well, God knew. This is two and a half thousand years ago. But the other thing I found, it says they're gonna be take part in an invasion of Israel. Now we know that is still, that is yet to come, but we crossed a prophetic line. Because what I found out as I look closer uh-huh. is every one of those nations had a part in the invasion of Israel on October 7th. The very nations mentioned by Ezekiel, every one of them was helping, abling, arming, p- taking part in an invasion for the first time in human history. So we crossed a line and we and, and there's and we actually crossed more than one. We'll talk about it. But we are moving. It's accelerating that. That's crazy. In the Dragon's Prophecy, you also talk about this ancient entity called the Sarparos, if I'm pronouncing correct, that actually lies behind the current and dangerous world events. What is that? Yeah, one of the things, you know, we cannot understand the world without understanding really the spiritual realm. Uh And once you see it, it's like, whoa, yes. Well, the thing is that there's an ancient entity that's mentioned in the book of Daniel. In the Hebrew, it's called the Sarparos. And it's an entity that exists to uh, to stop the purposes of God for Israel, particularly in the last days. And it's actually the very the being, if you remember, when when Daniel is praying and the angel said, "I wanted to give you this revelation, but mm-hmm. I couldn't because I was stopped." Well, it says in the Hebrew by the Sar Paras. Sar means the master or lord, and and Paras means Iran. So it's the Lord of Iran. Wow. or Persia, but that's Iran. And so you actually have an entity that exists to stop the end time purposes of God for Israel that's linked to Iran. And so it's no, what would we expect to happen? It's no accident. Iran is going to become, and it has, is gonna turn, it's gonna be led by this entity, is gonna become an, the, the, the arch enemy of Israel in the modern world. It's all there in the Bible. And it's almost as like when Israel kept, comes back in the world because it's about the end time purposes, it's yeah. got to stop. It's like going to activate this entity. And so what So what would you expect exactly what's happening? That is why Iran is bent on destroying Israel. Right now, as we're recording this, things are happening in the world. It's amazing, but it's all behind it. It's seeking to get nuclear weapons to destroy Israel. It, it is It is arming other... Na- it was behind October 7th. You know, behind October 7th was Hamas. Behind Hamas was Iran. Behind Iran was the Sar Paras. And behind the Sar Paras was the dragon, because they're all together. And so the thing is that it, it, it's spiritual, it's amazing, and it's all happening. And so think about this too. This is in the last few months only, we actually crossed another prophetic line because Ezekiel said that Iran is mm-hmm. one of the nations that's going to launch an attack on Israel. Iran has never launched a direct attack, always used others. But for the first time in human history, in the last few months, we crossed another prophetic line when, it, when Iran launched hundreds of missiles directly to strike the land of Israel. Never happened before, and we're watching things happen again. It's amazing. We are truly in prophetic times. That is crazy. I've never saw that connection, what you were just saying about Daniel's interaction with the principality and how that's the principality behind Iran, you know, which is the where Persia used to be. And then, you know, Iran is behind Hamas and then Hamas is behind all these attacks and, and behind yes. Iran is the principality, behind the principality yes. is the dragon. It's kind of like yes. you're peeling layers of layers and, you know, finally we see the face where the enemy is hiding. So right. speaking about Iran, so the Iranian president just suddenly died. Is there a mystery behind that? Yes. And, and you know, the Iranian president... This guy named Ibrahim Raisi. Interesting, because he's Ibrahim, he's named after Abraham, the father of the Jewish people who he's trying to destroy. And also it's named after the one who God made a covenant with, Abraham. 
And the covenant was, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Mm -hmm. And he said, Israel's the apple of my eye. If you touch Israel, you touch the apple of my eye. Abraham Racy was the president of Iran, the first president of Iran, who oversaw the attack on Israel. He, he, he was for it. They attacked Israel. He oversaw it. And the thing is, he touched the apple of God's eye. Within about 30 days from doing that, he was struck dead. Within 30 days. He was in a helicopter. There were two other helicopters. They were fine. All of a sudden, his helicopter plunges from the, from the sky. And it's interesting because the Abrahamic Covenant says, as you, what you do to Israel will be done to you. And so he sought to bring destruction on Israel from the sky, from objects in the sky crashing into Israel. He was in an object in the sky. He crashed down to Israel. And not only that, Vlad, but right after he launched that attack, he issued a threat and made headlines. He said, he spoke of that Israel's going to be annihilated. There won't be anything left of Israel. Well, that's, he's talking about God's, God's eternal nation. That's blasphemy. He, he's not going to do that. Blasphemy. The, the weekend when he, his helicopter went down, it was a Sabbath. There was a scripture that was read throughout the Jewish world. And in Israel, you know, they open up the scrolls on the Sabbath. There's an appointed scripture they have to read. You know what the scripture was? It says, the one who blasphemes shall be struck down. And the next day it happened. And, and in Ezekiel 38 and 39, God says, I'm going to bring you down, all the, all the enemies of Israel, I'm going to bring you down. I'm going to bring you against the mountains. And he says, you will fall on the mountains. Well, Racy was the first leader of a nation mentioned in Ezekiel who actually struck Israel. And, and what happened? He was brought down against the mountains. He died on the mountains. Wow. What a, what a crazy connection that... Yes. You, can't, you can't make that up. That's uh, no. that, that definitely there's a spiritual connection there. In your book, you reveal a connection between a Temple Mount, October 7th, the Antichrist, and also the five red cows. Can you talk, us, can you talk to us about the secret of the Mount? Yes. Yeah. People don't realize this, you know, but behind October 7th was actually the Temple Mount. In fact, without that, it never would have happened. Hmm. The Temple Mount is the ground zero of prophecy. You know, it's all going to end there. It's all, you know, the book of Revelation is there's going to be a, there's going to be a temple on that mount and the Antichrist is going to go there to defile it, desecrate it. And the kingdom of God is going to be set up on that mountain. It says from that mountain, you know, so the enemy has an interest on this mountain. The enemy, so that it, it's like the dragons on that mountain because he, it's like he's taking control. The Jewish people are not, are not allowed to go up on that mountain and pray on the Temple Mount, which was made for prayer, they mm -hmm. can't do that. You know, all the, you know, because because the enemy knows if they do that, it's close. It's moving to that day that's going to be the end of his kingdom. So he's doing everything to keep them off. And so you got this battle going on. People don't realize at the beginning of that year something happened on the Temple Mount, mm -hmm. and it happened on a Hebrew holy day, and it was the the day of Passover. And there was a rumor report that Jewish people wanted to celebrate Passover on the Temple Mount. So every, all hell broke loose on the Temple Mount. The Muslims went crazy. It was a riot on the Mount. And Hamas issued a statement saying, you are playing with fire, Israel, and we're, basically it's, we're going to get you for this. October 7th was the answer to the Temple Mount. They even said it. Uh, when Hamas came out with a statement, they said it was because of the Temple Mount. Well, you know, I, I said that the operation was called Operation Tufan Flood, but the whole name was Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. That's the Temple Mount. It was named after the Temple Mount. The dragon goes crazy when you touch that mountain because that's the mountain of God. And, he, and, and not only that, let me, let me throw in a, and by the way, well, here, you know about the red heifers, you know, mm. the five red cows, red heifers. They actually, Hamas actually put in their statement, it was also because of those five red cows, he was, because, they, because they were threatened that the cows are part of the temple worship. This is the enemy. You can only understand it that way. And, and as, as it all happened, you know, on a Hebrew holy day, when they went Passover, mm -hmm. so the enemy struck God's people on a Hebrew holy day. In fact, the fact that the, the, the event on the Temple Mount was the first holy day of the Hebrew year. The last holy day of the Hebrew year was October 7th. And so, you know, and not, let me throw something in. It's going to be like a curveball. It's okay. I put it in the book. I can't go into it. But even behind September 11th was yeah, the I wanted, Temple yeah, Mount. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, how is that connected? 
Well, let me tell you, you know, when, when after October 7th, Hamas issues a statement, and that's what they said. It's, it's, almost, like, it's almost like the devil speaking, because the devil, because he says, because the Jews tried to defile the mountain with their, with their sinister holy days. Mm-hmm. You know, who would talk like that? Their evil holidays, you know, mm-hmm. it's what they So they, they say, they say we're trying to take it over. When, uh, when September 11th happened, Osama bin Laden issued a statement just it, it, right after, like Hamas did. And it was like the same words. And he said, and it was like the same person talking, except, except Osama bin Laden is dead, but it's the same person talking. And it says that it was because they wanted the Temple Mount, that, that because Israel wanted the Temple, they were going to take the Temple Mount. They weren't going to, but they were going to take the Temple Mount. That's the devil. Say, so because mm-hmm. of that, that's why we did September 11th. The bloodshed and the, that's the dragon. You, he says, you touch my mountain. It's not his mountain, it's God's mountain. But you touch my mountain, I'm gonna ex- I'm gonna go I'm gonna exert my fury against you. That was October seventh, and the same thing was Oct- was September eleventh. Wow, <laughs> Temple Mount. I will not look at that mountain again the same way yeah. <laughs> after after this insight. So we're seeing that after October seventh, as we alluded already, there has been a wave of anti-Israel, anti-Jewish rage that is sweeping. I mean, it's been there, but I feel like after October seventh, it just became almost popular it's almost like now people um, connect with it who don't even know anything about middle east and they'll just you know i, I stand with gaza and then and then they go against israel and, and they begin to call israel with all these names and what just happened with the prime minister speaking and uh, and people yeah. you know protesting and, and and all of that do you think that's a part of a mystery as well oh yeah oh yeah <clears throat> you know in revelation like right after after the the dragon's prophecy in revelation 12 there's another another vision where out of the dragon's mouth doesn't come water this time, come spirits, unclean demonic spirits. And they go, it says they go throughout the earth and they rouse the world to come against, to Armageddon, which is to come against Israel. So what we saw on, you know, after October, you know, you'd think that people would be sympathetic for Israel. But the amazing thing was it, it, this rage against the victims. I mean, rage against the hostages. They would tear down the pictures of the hostages. This is not natural, you know. And in Harvard University, you know, and they're chanting, they're chanting, from the river to the sea, Palestine shall be free. Well, you know what that's, the chant is chant is the chant for the destruction of Israel. That's saying that basically Israel is going to be erased by Palestine, land of the Philistines. But you know what, Vlad, there's even something beyond. And it's why, you know, when you understand, when you see what the, the strategies of the dragon, the thing is that he always twists things. And so what that was, was what that whole thing, it was the Abrahamic promise. When God promised uh-huh. Israel, Abraham and his children, the land of the promised land, Israel, he said specifically, he said, it shall be from the sea to the river, from the sea to the river. So the enemy reverses it and says, from the river to the sea, we're going to wipe it out. And so it's like so classic, the enemy. So if you have, a, you know, the Bible says it's all going to end with Armageddon. Uh-huh. And if you have a hard time understanding how, like fathoming how the whole world could come against this little tiny nation of Israel. Well, you know what? You don't have to wonder. Look what you saw in the world. Look at that spirit. Well, that spirit is going to get even more intense as the days go by. But you can actually see it. And by the way, you mentioned something because the prime minister of Israel spoke at Capitol Hill. And you know that half of one party, American party, boycotted him. Half of them. And and usually it's the young. So that's kind of telling you where this is going. And it's exactly what the Bible says. Is there going to be another? Is all of this leading to the dragon's other war that's going to be taking place? Well, yeah, there, there is, and, and that is, the, you know, the Bible says that the dragon waged war against the rest of the woman's children. Yeah. Who are they? I mean, if, if, if the woman is Israel, then mm-hmm. who are the children of, they're of the woman, they're not the woman, but they're of the woman. That is you, that is me, that is every believer in Messiah. It says he, he went, he waged war, not just against, not just about Israel, mm-hmm. it's about you who are a follower of Jesus. Okay. Because the Bible says that you are actually grafted in. You mm-hmm. are a citizen of Israel. You are the Israel of spirit. The, mm-hmm. the other Israel is the Israel of flesh and blood. Mm-hmm. And, but you are, you know, so you, we're, we're, we're all joined together. 
So the dragon makes war against both of them mm -hmm. because he war he wars against Israel physically because they're the physical nation. Yeah. He wars against us spiritually because we're the spiritual nation. So through persecution and all. So in the last days, you're going to see two wars. You're going to see it's really the same, but two sides that the dragon's going to war against Israel to destroy it, get all nations against it. But he's going to war against God's people with persecution and have the cultures turn against them. And we're watching both of them happen. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm just throwing this in. If anybody who saw the Olympics, you can see this happening in the world. So it's happening. And the thing is, so the church and Israel have to come together. We're gonna to be brought together because the dragon is against both of them. And the thing is that, you know, the church was born in Israel. It's not complete until it all comes home. And that's when Messiah is coming home. He's the center mm -hmm. of both. Mm -hmm. So there is gonna be this joining together. We are all in a war, no matter who you are. That's why when I wrote the book, it's not only about the cosmic things and the, the prophetic things and the mystery, but it's also the personal thing because everyone is dealing, there's not one person who's watching this now because if you're in the image of God, that you're not in that war. Mm -hmm. The dragon is warring against your own life and has been doing it since you were born. And we got to recognize the strategy so we can overcome. You, in your book, you talk about not only, as you mentioned right now, that, that the dragon is going to fight against Israel, the dragon is going to fight against the, the children of this woman, uh, which is the church. And then you also talk about how it will be against um, each one of us. Uh, and you mean specifically where personally the enemy will be attacking each one of us, not necessarily as a persecution, but more like as an affliction and attack. Can you explain more about that? Yeah, yeah, because it, remember the dragon, if you're if you're in the image of God, you're you're he, he hates you. you know, uh -huh. He wants to stop you. He wants to keep you from God. You know, if you are in the image of God and you're a believer, double. If you're an image of God believer and Jewish, you're dealing Triple. with all of it. So the thing is that, by the way, pray for me because every time a book comes out, all everything happens, and this one was already happening. All right. So since you, I'm, I'm talking to everybody here. Since you were born, when you were conceived, the enemy has been warring against you. He's been trying to keep you away from God if he could. Uh -huh. He's tried to discourage you. He's tried to defile you, to enslave you, put you in bondage, uh, depress you, suppress you, bruise you, wound you, make you panic and afraid and get you from God, get you from the calling so he can destroy you. Every single one, he's doing that. You know, it's interesting because when you look at the, the strategy of the, I call it the Palestine stratagem, and that is that what did he do to the promised land? He, re, he takes away its name. He renamed it. He took away the promised land. He says, I'm going to call it Palestine. And so then he, he gives it a false identity. Well, that's what he tries to do with everybody. He's, he's trying to take mm. manhood away from men and womanhood away from women. And, and take our identity and each of us to take us from who we are born to be in God and have a fake, a false identity. And that's why we have to take it back and we have to fight. And, and the whole, the last part of the book is that strat, how do we deal with it mm. and the end times, but each, each of us and what is it, how do we have victory? Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you as we're bringing this to an end, you know, because the book of Revelation talks about the lamb, it talks about the dragon. And yes. then, you know, it also talks a lot about us overcoming. It does kind of feel like it's pretty negative and pretty pessimistic and pretty dark until you get to the last few chapters. And that's when all the victory uh, begins. But okay. what are some of the practical things that we can do as, as people in this war right now with this dragon? Do we stand any chance? Can we resist? Can we just, do we just have to take the beating and lie low and wait until the Messiah comes? What are some of the things we can do to overcome? No. The answer is no, we don't, we don't, we're not going to take it. Yeah, a few things. Yeah, this is all, and by the way, Vlad, all my books end with hope and end with yeah. what do we do and is there, is there a key from God in this for us? And so, so it's only seeing how real God is, but what do we need, we need to do? A few things. Number one, in the book of Revelation, the dragon fights the lamb. You know, and you, when you, if you were watching a dragon fight a lamb, most people would put their bets on the dragon. You know, dra the lamb is helpless, but the lamb wins. And, the la and, and evil always comes like a dragon, to, it's like it's overwhelming, it's gonna, but, and good comes like a lamb. It, 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 it looks like we're on the losing side, we're, we're underdogs, but we win. We have to remember, number one, we are on the winning side. You gotta keep going, you're on on the winning side. And the other thing is that when you look at the Jewish people in the phenomenon of history, you know, you look at how they've been so attacked and every, the pharaohs and Egypt, uh, Syria, Rome, Babylon, Hitler, everybody been trying to wipe them off the earth. But here's the thing, Vlad, this is, this is real. The thing is that after all that time, the pharaohs are gone. Assyria is falling. Babylon is no more. Rome Goli has Goliath, Goliath is you know, gone. 
They're all fallen. They've all fallen, but the nation of Israel lives. It shouldn't exist, but it does because the God of Israel lives. And if you're the people of God, you're going to live. You are guaranteed victory if you fight. Mm. And the other thing is that when you look at the book of Revelation, it says in that very, you know, why I called it the dragon's prophecy, in that very chapter in the middle is where it says, but they overcame him. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony and loving not their lives to death. So here's the thing. The word is nekeo. It mean, the word nekeo means total victory, but it's, it's written in the past tense. So it means that mm. it's as good as done. And the thing is that, and I, I got I to I gotta say this as we read, so I got to say this. The most Jewish people weren't known to be fighters. You know, for 2,000 years, we weren't allowed to fight, you know. And, you know, and, and there's a lot of people, you know, like the Italians have good fight stories. Mm-hmm. Irish people have good fight stories. Jewish people, no, they have almost fight stories. They said, if, if he said one more word, one more, I would have done it, but nobody knows what the word is. <laughs> so we, so I, I was growing up the same way. So the Jewish people weren't fighters, but mm-hmm. when they came back to the land of Israel, they had to learn how to fight mm-hmm. because if they didn't fight, they would be wiped off because, yeah. of the, because the dragon is real. Now, so what it says is this. Here's the, here's the secret for us. If you're a born again, you're not only a spiritual Israelite, you're a spiritual Israeli. Because that's Israel. The word Israelite in the Bible is Israeli. That, that's that's the, who they are right now. So if they had to become fighters in the last days and God anointed them in fighting, we have to become fighters in the spirit. And we, and we are meant to be fighters. And that mm-hmm. means is we are not, you are not to take what the devil is trying to do to your life. Mm-hmm. You are not to accept that sin, not to accept that situation, not to accept that darkness, that compromise, not to accept that bondage. You are to fight saying, I am not going to take it. I have the power of God in me. And the thing is that that's why it says greater is he who is in you than he was in the world. In the last days, the enemy, the dragon is going to go crazy, but it doesn't matter. We are on the winning side. Israel had to again become a nation of warriors as they Mm. were in ancient times. We have to become like the book of Acts. They were warriors in the spirit. God has called us to become like them again. And and if we stand for God and we are going to become, God has called us to be dragon fighters. Mm. By the power of the lamb, we will overcome. We are bound for victory. And in this, you listen, in this fight, you, you know, it's not about how good you are, not how strong you are. It's if you keep fighting, you win. In this race, it doesn't matter how fast you are, keep running and you'll win. You are guaranteed victory, but fight the good fight. Mm, that is such an encouragement. The word the end, we are dragon fighters and we're going to yes. win. The dragon's going to die. We're going to overcome. And um, we just heard the tools, the name of Jesus, the testimony and not loving our lives till death. This is a spiritual warfare. This doesn't mean that we don't have to speak up against the evil. We have to speak up. We have to put up a resistance because if we don't, one day we will not be able to speak against what we see at Olympics, what we see happening in our schools, what we see, you know, men go into the women's bathrooms, what we see happening on our streets today, in our universities. And we have to be salt and light, meaning we gotta, we gotta make our presence make a difference in where we are standing. But we have to understand, um, like Jonathan, like you just mentioned, that we are gonna have a fight. This is not going to be a cakewalk. Yes. This is not a vacation. And that's why I yep. think a lot of people who have this vacation world view that, you know, it's kind of like they're almost expecting like if you're a Christian, you're going to have a Disney experience. And it's pretty disappointing to go into a Normandy beach expecting a vacation experience because you're going to be very disappointed. Yes. But if if you are a warrior in the garden, you're going to have a way better experience than if you are a gardener in war. And so and I think that having that mentality, we are here to win, to fight. We are here. We're going to endure suffering as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. We're going to fight against the devil. We're going to fight against his agenda in our life personally. And we're going to st- stand with the lamb and go where the lamb goes. And we're going to win with the lamb. Now, this book definitely just scratched the surface of uh, everything that is in there. We couldn't even touch a lot of other things that um, are mentioned there. If somebody is interested to learn more after listening this and they just really want to be equipped, they want to know what's going to happen in the future. God's word has those secrets. Where can they get their own copy of the Dragon's Prophecy? Yes, the Dragon's Prophecy is coming out right now. It's literally everywhere. Um, Wherever wherever there are books, it's there. Um, And Amazon, you can get it online right now. Um, if you get it, if there are people in your life who need to know, get it for them too. 
This is the this is the the first copy that they I've ever seen that they sent. This is what it looks like: the Dragon's Prophecy from Revelation. So it's Israel, the Dark Resurrection, and the End of Days. So it's literally everywhere. So this is the first one I showed it to. It is it is everywhere, and you were the first one to see it. But make sure now you go get it. And 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 the, his books are incredible. They're they're easy. Not only they're easy to read, they're very captivating. And you are a prolific, very engaging and captivating author no wonder why every book that you've released is a new york bestseller and and because it i feel like god is using you also to expose this to bring reality of the spiritual world i think to wake people up i mean people are noticing what's happening on the news what's happening on the streets what's happening in our universities but what you're doing is you're pulling the curtain with all of your books and letting you know hey there is there is a spiritual reality behind that that is dominating this physical reality and this is what you need to know what's happening in the spirit realm jonathan if people want to learn more about your ministry get connected uh find your church where yeah. they can do that Thank you, uh, Vlad. Yeah, um, we it, the ministry is called Hope of the World, and it's to get the gospel out and say, and all my teachings are there, and everything I do is there, um, and a lot of compassion projects to the world. Uh, it's the end time, so that it's Hope of the World, and if you just remember that and go online, you'll get gifts, you'll get prophetic updates. Uh, hope of the world org. It's all over. Of course, I'm on YouTube as we, we are, um, and everywhere else we're on. You know, we're all over uh, Facebook. Um, and the church, the, the congregation church is called Beth Israel. If you're ever on the East Coast, and that's too for you too, but uh, the East Coast in New Jersey, way New Jersey, it's Beth Israel, the Beth Israel Worship Center. Um, so yeah, all and and all my all the books are online, of course, and you know we're all over. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing and being very generous with your time and sharing this revelation with us by. A virtue of the book and as well as uh, doing this interview with me. Thank you Vlad, it is always a joy and an honor truly and you're doing great things. I hear it all over. Stay strong, I know you will. Thank you sir.